On the show today, we talk about giving and receiving. And to match that, our symbol is T. And as always, we answer your calls and interpret the dreams you sent in during the week. Welcome to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan and Susan Pullen. Hello. Uh, Heidi Brooke is still on vacation in Alaska, but she's with us next week. And that will be our one year anniversary with all three of us together. Uh, Our show is about dreams, guidance and healing. And our phone number is 425-373-5527. Please give us a call if you have a dream or a question for Susan about blocks or changing old life patterns. Once again, the number 425-373-5527. So, Susan, uh... Any courses coming up? <laughs> I know I, you just had one. Yeah, I just had one. Um, I actually, I have a whole, I have like five new courses coming up that um, I'm working on getting the descriptions. Five? Down Why so few? <laughs> <I know. laughs> yeah, I've got one coming up on the 16th of July, but we'll really talk about it next week. But if anybody's interested, dream-analysis.com. And if you want to send your dreams to the show, it's radio show at dream analysis.com. And that fans the, the dream out to uh, all of us so we all get to see it. So you can send questions to Susan or Heidi to that email address as well. Yes. So giving and receiving. Why giving and receiving? Who do you know who's not doing that? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me, is it? <laughs> Don't answer that. No, I won't. <laughs> no. Um, but it's it's uh, it's a common thing that we want. Well, that we run into in dreams. Yeah, it's. it's Super Probably the, the most common, yeah, because it's connected to issues of the heart. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think in our culture, in our our American mainstream culture, there's such an emphasis on being self-sufficient. And, you know, we have like this cultural mythology of like the old Marlboro Man or, you know, there's this like going it alone and that's cool Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind, of, kind of mentality. Um, it's, it's true. Most people... Well, too many people uh, suppress their feelings and it causes problems for them, which is why we, it shows up so much in dreams. But where, you know, people can do it because you're trained and then people can do it because of circumstance. Um, you know, what happens to you in life, how you're hurt, etc. cetera. Um, but how long do you carry that pain and use it as an excuse to suppress happiness and joy? Yeah. Which you may not realize you're doing, of course, because you, you're suppressing the pain at the time, but now three years later, you're still suppressing. Right. And, and of course, when we suppress our feelings, it's the, whole, it's the whole gamut. It's the whole range and not just particular. We don't get to pick and choose yeah. which feelings we're not going to feel. We always think we can, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you want to start with a, with a dream example or shall I? Well, if you want to throw out a dream, absolutely. All right, let's do but that. But I don't, I don't know what you've written. We'll in fact, in I was mood. hoping... I was hoping I would say the main point and ruin your uh, piece, but no, it didn't happen because <laughs> I didn't see any grimace on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. Better luck next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll, give us, I'll give us an example because I think this ties in with what you just said. And um, so this I pull from our, our, our dream queue. Yep, yep. So I pulled this one. It's called High Drink. Um, I'm on the way to meet a group of friends, and I pass by the cafeteria. A woman server there asks me what I want. I'm thirsty. I try, uh, I'm trying to decide what I want to drink. She knows just the thing for me. She offers me a taste of cold black tea drink. And instead of putting it in a cup, she uses the empty tea box, which is open on one end, to give me a swig. The drink comes out of the fountain set up like for pop. Uh, the label on the fountain is red and black and says, hi. It's a graphic of a stylized um, Alaskan family with a father leading a mother and two small children walking to the right. And below the graphic logo is a little band that says, to wake up in the morning, eight. And the eight is supposed to be the caffeine content. And I, I think it might be good, but I want sweetener because it's a little bitter. Okay, and... She added a comment saying that she's in a, a rocky relationship and um, she thinks the dream's about that. Yeah. And that's always interesting because um, she also added that her, her partner is Alaskan or from that area. His family is from that area. So that's significant. And we wouldn't know that, of course, uh, 
uh, unless Heidi told us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's not here. So uh, it's always good to tell us the comments. So, uh, yeah, it, it's definitely about sharing. Um, and waking up is good in a dream, mind you, and even references to waking up because that's um, always positive, always about uh, doing something new in your life. So it's it's about, the, let's start at the top. We have the coffee shop. Um, that's about sharing because you meet your friends at coffee shops. Yeah, the cafeteria. Um, the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's a public place where you generally meet people. You don't generally sit and meet on your own. Um, and the dreamer even says she was going to meet people, not necessarily there, but she was going to meet people. Um, and then um, what else have we got? Uh, we have colors. We have a black and white server. So that this is shown the dreamer looking at something in a black and white way or at least bothered by something uh, by holding on to looking at something in a black and white way. Um, and then we have she's served cold iced tea. So our is it black iced tea? Yeah. So oh, black iced tea. Uh, yeah, I love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> in case uh, you missed it the first yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> so the the iced tea tea is about sharing, and that's that's why we you pick this one. Yeah. Uh, so tea is about sharing, um, and uh, because we we generally have tea with others, we share it with others. We tend to make a pot of tea rather than, uh, even though things have changed these days, it's still about sharing, and um, so the iced tea is about being cold or emotionally cold or not sharing. Um, because of what's going on in the relationship, she doesn't share that with us, so we don't know. Um, and uh, but we know it's 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 thrown her anyway. Uh, and then the black is going to be about fears or negativity in that relationship. So negativity causing um, her to be cold or close herself off. Um, and then we have colors. We have black and red. Mm -hmm. So this shows there's anger uh, going on. So she's angry about something in the relationship. Um, and then she's drinking from the tea uh, like as if it's a pop fountain so um, or a soda fountain. So there's there's also reference in here about something that the dreamer's drinking um, that she needs to cut down on, most likely. What did I skip? Um, let's see. The server gives her the black tea in, a, in the box, in an empty tea box. Right. Okay. So the server actually, and, and this is... This is always how you find out what somebody's ability is because they, we use our own abilities in our dreams to heal us. Um, so if I'm a counselor, I'll use my counseling in my dreams because it's going to help me. Um, this dreamer is using a server. So the server is a guide, um, but a server symbolizes uh, spiritual healing. So the dreamer is a spiritual healer and she's using healing in her dreams, in her dream to, to heal the negative effects of this relationship, of what's going on in the relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's a good point. It's not necessarily about healing the relationship. It's about healing what's going on within yes, her related to her relationship. to stop her from closing off because she's yeah. not closed off because she's still out in public and uh, she's still looking to get uh, this tea and, and have this drink. And you said there was an eight in it as well. An eight is about balance. It's the only balanced number if you imagine it on its side. It's the infinity symbol. So it's about uh expanding ourselves infinitely and you know through keeping the heart chakra open so it's a positive thing in a dream or positive in this dream um there's still more there's still something i know i'm skipping any idea what it is um let's see well she says the eight is it's about giving the caffeine content but that's probably really yeah to so the she, cutting back on didn't you say there was a high on it as well so yeah the, it's called high so yeah it's called high so there's there's something she's drinking or eating that's that affects her mood, that gives her a, a lift. And, um, you know, that that's in the dream too. Um, it'll come to me during your piece and I'll just blurt it out <laughs> and, and I'll grab your train of thought and it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what is the thing? The thing is here, it's not the relationships and, and the, the bad things that happen in the relationships. They're, they are what they are. But how long we drag around the effect of those and how long we let it control um, our lives and and um, uh, stop us from being happy and stop us from being open and sharing, which is what this dream is trying to do, prevent her from getting into a space where she is cold and uh, unemotional and so on. And the drinking from the box is about her gift of healing. It's telling her, she, you know, boxes are usually going to be about that. In fact, we have dreams, other dreams uh, for this show that are about that too. So, um, so that's good. And um, it's a positive in the dream, which is why I mentioned the healing. Yeah, yeah. And she talks about the drink being a little bitter, which is probably her. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah, bitter about what's going on and, and she needs to do something to sweeten things up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I see we have a couple of 
callers. Should we take those we before we go to? Probably will. Probably will. Okay. So we have Janie in Maryland. Uh, how are you doing, Janie? Hi. How are you? Very good. Uh, it says you have a dream to share. Even uh, filling in with the uh, the theme of sharing. So please tell. Yes. <laughs> I I hope that it um, symbolizes some kind of sharing. Um, I didn't name this one. So. I saw an earthworm moving through moss and rocks, and then I saw a long table of women sitting with plates in front of them. They were all wearing black dresses, and they all had blonde hair. Um, the table and the surroundings were bright and white. All of the women spit out a whole fork and then sucked up a whole spoon. The utensils were bright and translucent. And when I opened my eyes from the dream, the word Viking was explained. Okay, and that's the whole dream? Yeah. So it starts off with a worm under a rock. And is it out? So it's outside because of the rock. But then you talk about a whole line of women. And um, then you mention eating utensils. So is there a table in it anywhere? Or how, how, how come they have forks and... Um, spoons, I think is what you said. Uh, yeah, it was just all, first I just saw the earthworm in the rocks, and then suddenly, I think we were inside of a building, but it was just really bright surrounding, so it, I couldn't really tell. Um, but yeah, all the women were sitting around the table with plates in front of them. And uh, anything on the plates? Because we, we really yeah. want to see the food in this dream, what the food item is. No, they were just empty plates, and then they spit out a fork and fucked up a spoon. They spit out a fork? Yeah. Oh. Oh, and sucked up a spoon. Yeah. Okay, okay. So this, um, because we don't see the, the food item, the worms are the bad thing in this dream, or the worm is the bad thing. But it can be about feeling lowly as well as it being uh, really negative about um, health issues to do with food. And because we have the fork and the spoon and the plates with nothing on them, um, uh, you know, I think it's probably both. So uh, it's the line of women is also going to make it about digestive system, anything to do. Anytime you see a line or a cue, uh, it's it's showing that uh, food is slowed down in the body. Um, but really, it's it's going way back. You said they're wearing black, but they have blonde hair. Yeah. Um, so it's something negative to do with uh, a female in your life. And it's it's probably going to go back to to childhood or go back to mother and the reason most dreams go back there the most issues go back there is we're not rational at when we're children we don't have the capability of ration to rationalize that hasn't kicked in yet so anything that's said to us as a child has much more force much more impact than it ever would as an adult so if somebody was to call your name or say you're worthless as an adult you would know they've got problems and um, you know if it's somebody close to you and they said it, it could hurt but somebody else it's like no, I know it's their issue. But as a child, uh, it's all amplified. So the dream implies, because somebody spitting out forks, implies that somebody uh, was harsh with their tongue uh, with you at some point going back in time. And this uh, is what the dream is, is trying to heal. And um, it's, it's kind of a... There's no solution given in the dream. I'm looking for the solution. I'm looking for what is it asking you to do. I mean, it's very bright. That's a positive thing in the, in the dream. And the blonde hair is positive. The blonde hair is about purity of thought. So if this is something that you're dealing with or have dealt with uh, and um, you're overcoming it by uh, thinking about it. And, um, yeah. Uh, Janie, you said the um, there was moss on the rock. I, was that green moss? Yeah. Okay, so that fits in with sharing of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so does, in fact, the, the, the communal kind of dining. Um, yeah, I'll let you, uh, Susan, I'll let you channel on the solution. <laughs> no. Okay, so it just, it's saying what you need to look at. So you need to look at a woman in your life who, um, who had this forked tongue, you could say, and um, dealing with that is going to help you heal issues to do with digestion and issues with um, feel, you know, raise your stature, raise your sense of self-worth uh, at the same time because the two are in inextricably linked. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, and and I'm I'm at the same place where you are about there not being a solution there, and I do have and have been trying to figure out for years issues with um, around eating. 
Oh, okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, we know what it is. We we know where it comes from then. Uh, and then the empty plate. So let's let's look at that because the plate, because it's empty and the plate is circular, I presume. Um, that's a hint because um, circular is good. It fits in with the green moss. Um, so it's saying issues to deal. The solution is when you don't see it clearly in the dream, the solution is to deal with the issue that's presented. So the the I would say for this one, it's about cutting the ties with your mom. I'm going to say your mom because you're not correcting me, but it's going to be some female character um, that was influential. Uh, and then the empty plate, you look at that and you say, um, so if it's a circular plate, it can be about goals as well as about eating. So uh, was there somebody who was able to rob you of your goals by uh, dismissing them? So if you said, I want to do this or I want to be this, uh, and they would um, uh, tear it down on you and, and, and stop you from, you basically take away the positive energy you would have in pursuing your goals. So they're the things you look at. Cutting the tie. So that's the solution. It's definitely the solution dealing with the issues with this with this woman. Now, the dream shows lots of women, so it shows the, the overbearing impact of it because they all do this. Um, uh, but, but that's what you're carrying around. The effect of that and dealing with the effect of that is going to open you up. So healing the issues around the heart because of the green moss and, and, and the worm um, is the solution. So you wanted to say? Yeah, the, at the end of the dream, she hears the word Viking. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, what's that? <laughs> okay. So, if you were to describe uh, the person that influenced you, were they were they like that? Like a, I would take Viking as a very positive thing, um, but they did uh, they did conquer lots of places. Yeah, so. they did. <laughs> uh, and they had, but they had horns and helmets and so on. So, um, let me think about that one. Um, and I'll get something on it. But uh, the, the word king is good. Yeah, Susan's pointing this out. She's very quiet. She should jump in here. <laughs> so it, it would indicate that when you deal with this, that uh, you, you've got spiritual leadership abilities that are going to get stronger from dealing with this. So that's really the um, the positive side of working on this. Um, so, so do you work with people? Do you help people um, spiritually? I think that I do in, in my own kind of way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, we always think people tend to always think back in time and think of like Buddha, Jesus, Gandhi and other people like that or people who are alive today like the Dalai Lama. But there are thousands and thousands of spiritual teachers and leaders on the planet right now and they're just not living famous lives. And so the very ordinary, what I'm going to, in, in air quotes saying ordinary people, uh, bring these abilities with them. And spiritual leadership works through an open and compassionate heart where um, you share yourself with others. And to be in that space, uh, you, you do feel vulnerable. You have to feel vulnerable because you're encouraging the person that you're working with to also open up and show their vulnerable side. But it's all about female energy, all about listening. It's not what we conventionally think about leadership. Um, and it's different for everybody. So if you think you do it, you're probably very humble about the fact that you do it. Um, because there are a lot of people who claim to be spiritual leaders that aren't. They don't have an ounce of it. And um, it is actually measured in ounces, <laughs> in case you're wondering. But um, so th that's the good side. So it's saying, okay, work on that, and it's going to bring this in uh, even stronger than you already have it. And the, the warm thing uh, is really just saying you don't recognize this side of yourself, but you really you are the strong Viking character. Um, ultimately, uh, and that's as much part of your nature as the feeling downtrodden. Is that okay, Jeannie? Yeah, I love Jeannie. it. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Do Thank do you. send us more dreams uh, as a follow up and remind us what it was about. I will. Thank you. So, just to remind you, the number is four two five three seven three five five two seven, and we're going to take a break. Back with you in a moment. <laughs> Do you want to be happier? You've probably already heard that happiness is an inside job. You know that it doesn't come from outer circumstances. It's a gift we give ourselves, but you're not sure how? Join me, Susan Pullen, for a weekend workshop devoted to inviting joy, passion, and play back into your life. June 25th and 26th in Edmonds, Washington. You'll learn proven tools for greater happiness as well as healing heartache and letting go of dead weight in your life. You'll leave the weekend feeling lighter, more present, and more joyful. 
Go to true-radiance.com today to register for Inviting Joy Back Into Your Life. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. Hi, I'm Michael Sheridan, and I'm here to tell you about my new book. In 1990, I had a spontaneous awakening, and the veil between the physical world and the spirit world was lifted for me. I didn't believe in the spirit world, but that no longer mattered. I was looking at it. My new site didn't give me answers, but it opened my mind enough to begin asking questions. It would ultimately lead me to discover that the spirit world is always involved in everything we do. My book reveals what I learned about the spirit world as I stumbled through my journey and is titled My Journey to Awakening and is now available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback. My Journey to Awakening by Michael Sheridan. Easy on the ears, good for the soul. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan and Susan Pullen. Our show is about dreams, guidance and healing and our phone number is 425-373-5527 if you have a dream, a dream related question or you can call with questions for Susan about healing and changing old patterns in your life. Once again, the number is 425-373-5527. So uh, did you want to cover uh, your piece? I see we've calls coming in. but Yeah, um, I can wait. Do you want to, um, how about if we do that other dream that relates to the topic? That you okay, brought? all right. Um, only loosely relates to it. It's called Watching for a Blowout. I'm in my garage looking at a bike I'm repairing. Next, I'm driving down the highway on the bike. I'm taking it easy. I'm wary of the tires. I'm watching the front tire because it could blow out. I shouldn't be driving on these tires. Then I'm at a party. There's a blonde woman there. Her husband is up on the balcony doing impressions. I can't remember who he impersonated, but he was funny. I don't remember his wife saying anything. It's okay. Um, this dream is, a, is about the heart and uh but it's more physical than anything else. But it's saying the, the blowout is watch that you don't have a blowout. And when I was talking to this dreamer and asked, you know, what's going on in your life? He started talking about his career. And 30 minutes later, I had to stop him. Uh, he, oh. he was going on and on and about how uh, it, it just stirs him up and riles him. Um, and he, he just frustrates the heck out of him. And so the dream uh, title of watching for a blowout is, uh, is perfectly, it's a perfect title. So, um, but the blowout here is, is uh, what you don't blow a gasket in, in terms of uh, your heart and an emotional cool. So the garage is about the heart, uh, always is. It's about separate, you know, it's part of the house, but it's separate. So it's about separation of feelings. And the bike is about that too. One of the really common symbols, but he's repairing the bike. And that's a good thing in the dream. So and in reality, apparently he's per- repairing this bike. So it's saying um, he is in the dream. He's healing uh, issues to do with his heart. Uh, but then he's driving down the highway on the bike. So the highway is also about uh, give and take. Uh, traffic on a highway is about give and take. Uh, and then he's taking it easy. So the dream is saying take it easy uh, because he has to take it easy on the tires he's got uh, in case there's a blowout. And he says it's the front tire. So this is not a past thing. This is something that's coming that could potentially happen. So it's not commenting on something that's already happened. So watch uh, how you're going. Go easy on your heart and go easy on letting things get you and, and rise your blood pressure because... Uh, it's not good for you. And then the party is all about uh, relaxing. The blonde woman is there, but she doesn't really do or say anything. So that's his female side suppressed. So we have the man is up on a balcony. So we have the male side up high, female side down low. It's a real classic. Um, and all the expression is from the male side, from intellect. So it's saying, look, you need to get down into your heart and allow your heart some expression um, because that's really important um, for your health, for, the, for your blood pressure. Um, and that's about it. So that's the other one that matches. But we have uh, Cammy on the line uh, with a dream. So, hi, Cammy. Can you hear us? Hi. Can you hear me? I can indeed. So, you have a dream you want to share. I do. I do. Um, so, a girlfriend and I were uh, walking an indoor farmer's market. Uh, we were, you know, as shoppers. And um, 
So she walks a customer over to me and says, oh, this lady wants more of your stuff. And then all of a sudden I turn to the left and I have this huge booth of like knitwear. And um, I was just like selling like crazy, uh, making money like hand over fist. And, um, and then I look and she has a booth, like three booths over. And she's like selling like ethnic kind of import things. And I keep trying to um, talk to her, but we're um, both so busy. We're just, um, just we have our own booths, and we're like running these businesses. Um, okay, I'm, and then keep going. Oh, go ahead. No, keep going. Keep going. Oh, I was just gonna say, and then in her booth, she she actually had a glass case, um, some things in the case she was helping customers with, and then I just remember. Um, it was like she was selling, there was Mickey Mouse jewelry, but like fine jewelry. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Like silver and gold, kind of like well-made things, but it was a Mickey Mouse motif. Oh, and then all of a sudden the arena um, opened up to more of like a bigger, um, like a trade show or something like that. And then, um, although I did, oh, I'm sorry. There was one part where um, she did walk a customer over that I didn't have a, a tag on something and it was uh, like this knitted hat and I and I said oh thirty dollars okay. so I know some some threes have been coming up so what do you think of that okay so it's a really positive dream um do you uh sell anything in reality no but I do have a lot of business ideas okay and have you ever gone with any of the ideas what's that have you ever uh run with any of the ideas um, no, I'd like to, though. Uh, so one thing you, that's really useful when you have a friend in a dream, it's great because you can look at the friend and say, what is it about this friend? What's the positive thing about this friend that stands out, you know, that's different from you? Oh, that's different from me? Um, I was going to say we're both, like, very intuitive and we like to share, like, our spiritual knowledge um, and kind of bounce it off of each other. Okay, that's perfect. So that's what you're meant to sell. Um, but you are a healer. So the indoor farmer's market, a farmer's market is about selling uh, fresh produce. And food, uh, anybody selling food items in a dream is, is going to symbolize healing because that's how we nourish ourselves. And healing is about um, a healer nourishes us or gives us energy uh, just the same way food does. So any, any source of energy in a dream symbolizes healing. But so too does the gold. Uh, necklace that she, uh, your friend is selling. Now you're everything in the dream, so you've got that ability. You've got a healing ability. Have you? So you you recognize that you have a strong intuition, but have you ever thought about doing healing? For instance, uh, has that ever crossed your mind? Yes, and yes, ha- it has. Have you trained in it? You don't need to, but have you trained in it? No, I I I have. I've definitely trained in it my whole life. So I would like to make some type of career out of it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so you're doing the right thing. So then we have to get, and, and there's more of the dream I'm going to cover, but we have to get to the knitwear. Why the knitwear? So do you knit? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a yes. Not often. Not often. <laughs> I know how to, but not okay. enough to fill up a little booth. <laughs> okay. That's so, for sure. So uh, Maybe a scarf, but nothing okay. else. <laughs> and you sold a hat. Uh, what color was the hat? Oh, I don't remember the color i just remember the price i blurted out yeah so the 30 is to do a commitment commitment to your goals three is commitment and zero is goals okay. so it's saying okay. look but people are paying you so you're going to get um rewards you're going to get um energy back from uh, s- selling your your wares now in the dream it's the knitting um, but that doesn't fit because you don't knit, you don't knit anything to sell it anyway. But do you feel mm-hmm. if you were to um, get into the spiritual field and, and try sell your skills that you wouldn't be able to sustain yourself? Um, do I have a fear of that? Well, do you feel that? Because, you because in the dream, you're oh. not selling. You're not selling. You see other people who are selling like your friend is selling the gold chain and silver chains. Um Mm-hmm. and you're selling knitwear. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so I'm asking, do you feel that you need to have something else that you're selling alongside um, or, or another business that's more conventional 
alongside trying to get, say, a spiritual healing practice off the ground? Uh, yes, I would say that. Okay, so that's what the dream is showing. And it's showing you that you can do that. So there's no negatives oh, in the dream. It's saying, look, yeah, you could do that for sure. Um, and so let's go back to your friend then. She is she's selling the the gold and silver chains. And you also say there's a glass case um, on her stand. Um, the glass case is really interesting. And it's a little bit different for you. It says that you, when you look at people, you're able to tell what their ailments are. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. So that's quite a good one. So it fits with the healing. So, and it also fits with the intuition, but uh, it's an unusual one to see. So um, you could definitely do this and your friends will support you uh, in doing it. Um, but it's totally encouraging. And the dream is shown, look, it, it may be, it kind of like uh, you start by surprise, but it'll get bigger because you say the whole thing opened up into a much bigger arena. So um, Yeah, and it was just like the blink of an eye. I was the customer, then all of a sudden I had, I was just making money hand over fist. I was just like, oh my gosh, I have this business. Yeah. I don't even remember creating it. It just happened. So I would say, uh, do it for real. Go around uh, some fair where people do uh, do what you want to get into. And just take note of what they're doing. Not necessarily copy them. Be yourself. Do your own thing. Uh, but it will work for you. And um, you're being encouraged to do it, of course, in the dream because uh, the selling is successful. Nice. So quite nice. Cool. And why the chain? The chain means uh, you're obliged to do this, by the way. Uh, the chain oh, in, okay. implies karma. So it's like you're, you have agreed that you're going to do this or you have a contract that you're chained to that says, I'm going to do healing and I'm going to use my intuition. Um but but that's really cool. So um, describe to us how does how, how does the uh, ability to know what's wrong with a person how does that manifest for you? How, is it just like spontaneous or what? I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? How do you know what's wrong with people? How does it manifest for you? I'm just curious if you could explain it. Um, probably just I mean, being in their energy field, I almost feel like I just start reading their emotional body, maybe. Yeah. Well, no, you don't need to know how it works. It just works. It's great um, because yeah. then it, it gives you, first of all, you can say to the person, here's what I'm getting. And that causes them to open up because it'll be accurate. Uh, and then you have your intuition on top of that that uh, is really going to help because you can have a conversation with them while you're healing them because the two go together because um, she sees because your friend has them together. Oh, yeah, the Mickey Mouse. So um, you've got to watch having the view that it is kind of a Mickey Mouse operation, you know, that you couldn't make a living out of it. Oh, um, okay. Because you could. Look how, look how much money Disney make out of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, that was the one piece I didn't get. So thank you so much. <laughs> and the, the, knitwear, the knitwear to me feels like this is something that you're going to knit together. It's also something she creates with her hands. Yeah. It's her hands she uses for healing so yeah it's, yeah yeah it's, yeah it is it's, it's so it's all her it's all you right yeah it's you're going to be pulling pulling things together in your own way wow okay thank you so much this is really enlightening i appreciate your um, input all right keep us informed tell us when you make your first million <laughs> <laughs> i certainly will all thank right, you take care, have a great day you too <laughs> bye, bye all right so there's still time to call if you want the number is 425-373-5527 and we're going to take another break. Back with you in a moment. Hi, I'm Michael Sheridan, and I'm here to tell you about my new book. In 1990, I had a spontaneous awakening, and the veil between the physical world and the spirit world was lifted for me. I didn't believe in the spirit world, but that no longer mattered. I was looking at it. My new site didn't give me answers, but it opened my mind enough to begin asking questions. It would ultimately lead me to discover that the spirit world is always involved in everything we do. My book reveals what I learned about the spirit world as I stumbled through my journey and is titled My Journey to Awakening and is now available on Amazon for Kindle and in paperback. My Journey to Awakening by Michael Sheridan. Hello, this is Heidi. How can I help you? You tell me. You're the psychic. That's not how it works. I am a medium. I connect to your spirit guides and loved ones and pass on their messages to you. So why did I call? Use the force, Heidi. Look, I can get answers to any questions you ask. That's not a problem. 
They can be about anything. Relationships, career, children, finances, anything. Anything? Okay. What's my favorite color? Dave, your mom says you're being childish. For readings with Heidi, go to angelsontheline.com. How clear is your vision for your life? Are you living on purpose, bringing your dreams to reality? I can help you to hear the quiet voice of your heart, guiding you in the right direction. I'm Susan Pullen with True Radiance Healing Arts. Let's talk about how you can create the life you want and be the person you were born to be. Contact me today at true-radiance.com. Find our app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store and take us with you wherever you go. Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Welcome back to So You Think You're Awake with Michael Sheridan and Susan Pullen. Our show is about dreams, guidance, and healing. And our phone number is 425-373-5527. That's a clue. means you can call if you have a dream or a dream-related question or you want to call with questions for Susan about healing and changing old patterns in your life. Once again, the number is 425-373-5527. Um, so we might hold off on the piece um, that we were going to cover because we have actually talked a bit about give and take because of the dreams we got, but we always prefer the caller. So thank you for calling in. Um, so let's have a look at a couple of dreams uh, we, we got sent in or we'll be shot. Um, here's one that uh, are two from the same dreamer. And uh, I found this really interesting, Susan, because the analysis said to do something that I never thought uh, I would see in a dream. Anyway, the first one is called Pursued by Attackers. And uh, he says, I'm at the airport outside my office. Three guys in black got out of a car and were surprised to see me and started shooting at me. I ran and they pursued me. I ran into a passageway and there was an orange steamroller with silver drums coming towards me. The driver, wearing a blue suit, threw a phone to me and said, there is a call from the Americans. I was afraid the phone would explode, so I didn't listen. Um, now, of course, he says the airport is not at his office, but in the, in the dream, he was actually where his office is, and he's, he's starting a new venture and is actually dealing with Americans, but had a, um, a difference of opinion with his partner, and they've gone their separate ways. Um, so anyway, that's one dream, pursued by attackers. And the dream is about him being blocked by people who are thinking negatively about him. So, uh, mm. and this is what the pursuit is about. So the three black guys uh, are the three guys um, in black, not black guys, three guys in black got out of the car and they were surprised to see him there. So it's basically like an airport departure is about a project taking off or succeeding. So uh, here it's like the surprise is that whoever sending the negativity towards him is surprised that he's getting as, gotten as far as he's gotten. So this person knows that they're doing this, not necessarily consciously is aware of the amount of karma that they're incurring um, as a result of it, but they definitely are. Uh, and it's affecting his digestive system, which is what the orange steamroller is about. Um, so so we have all this negativity being thrown at him. Uh, and then we have the driver of the steamroller. Um, that He's a guide because uh, he's up high. Uh, steamrollers are high. And he's wearing a blue suit. So he's not talking. He's not wearing this black suit. So he's not with the other people. And he's, he uh, throws a phone to him, but he doesn't listen. So it's about communication from his guides. And it's saying the neg- negativity uh, being directed at him is affecting the connection from his guides uh, to the point where he doesn't trust anything he's getting because he doesn't trust mm. the phone that he's receiving. Now, that's not the part with the real, oh, here's what you need to do. So the next dream uh, from the streamer the following night um, is I went to a lodge. Uh, he calls it signal is blocked. So we can see the similarity straight away. I went to a lodge. The guy showed me lots of keys to rooms and said, pick your room. I was going to pick 29, but decided on seven. So seven's really good. Uh, on the landing of the lodge, there were lots of TV points, but the people there couldn't make a connection. It, had, it was obvious they had tried um, and had failed. And the owner was having problems with TV reception. It kept getting distorted and he was having the same problem with phone calls. Uh, when he would make a call, the, the signal was distorted. Anytime I made a call, I could because I was on the same router. Did I say it in the American? Yes, you did. Wow. Um, I could also connect the TVs up and get a signal. Uh, same too with TV. I was able to make a clear connection, but he couldn't. So when he was telling me this dream, um, I channeled uh, without even trying. So it just came in on top of me that he needs to do something to block the, um, 
the negative attacks that he's getting. So whoever's thinking negatively about him is succeeding. We can see from the first dream. They're bombarding him and uh, they're committed to bombarding him, which is what the three people is about. Um, so they're deliberately doing this. But what the, what the guide said is he needs to do something that will distract the person or the people who are uh, doing this to him. Hmm. And I never came across that before because no. I've often, I've worked in many psychic fairs abroad in here. And uh, you can go to booths where you can pay people who do voodoo to cast a spell on somebody, a negative spell. And I'm like, ooh, that is so not cool. But the answer for this dreamer is to do something similar to that, not pray that somebody uh, uh, injures themselves or anything, but to dis- to make it to where the person is so busy dealing with other things that they don't have time uh, or the focus to direct their negativity at him. What do you think about that? Mm. And it worked, by the way. Wow. It ended uh, weeks of problems that he was having. Uh, and... Of course, uh, what this dream said is it's not, so he's he's already dealt with the issues, his own issues himself, because he's got a clear connection. But the other people who are part of his business abroad, they're being affected, too, by this person. And so he had to clear them and he also had to keep them clear by working on keeping this person distracted by mentally projecting energy to keep them distracted. Huh. Would you ever have expected? No, nope, uh, I've not seen that before. And so this the dreamer, are they American? No. Okay. But their business partners are. Uh huh. Um, so it's just, uh, yeah, everything's global these days. So yeah. We, we get so many dreams from all over the world. Yeah. Um, we but, do. But the, and calls too. Yeah. But uh, it's interesting. I, I, it just stood out to me. And uh, so I channeled on it and I was like, yeah, that's what he needs to do. And of course, it makes sense. I know spiritually you can defend yourself uh, in any way that's reasonable at all. Um, so it's not that. You don't just turn the other cheek and keep letting somebody slap you. Um, But the whole idea of if somebody is hell bent on upsetting you and making sure you fail, you're entitled to deal with that issue in a spiritual way by projecting on them. Of course, you have to have the ability to project. But there you go. I'm glad you're as stunned as I was. Yeah, interesting. Um, So anyway, the, the signal being blocked, that other dream is about, you know, his reception from his guides. Uh, and the TV, he's also clairvoyant, so he gets images as well. But he gets more than that. Phones are about telepathy, so it's thoughts impressed onto your mind from your guides. And uh, then the TV is images. And the 29 is uh, saying that um, he can channel and he's been around the block a few times. And 7 is saying that the whole purpose for doing all this for him is uh, spiritual, which is interesting too. You rarely see... Um, career and spirituality on the same page but uh, some people you do and this person I always do Hmm. so they're meant to make money because they're going to use it for doing something in the spiritual field it'd be interesting to see where his dreams go next yes yes indeed so let's have a look at another dream Uh, I'm at my apartment in the parking lot my car begins to roll back out of its parking space I push it back in but it's not straight and I've hit the car beside me so I hold the car from the rear and straighten it. So she says she's able to like grab the car like as if she's superhuman and lift it up and, and move it to where it's straight. That didn't seem strange in the dream. I see a bald man up on a hill with a clipboard. He's watched the whole thing. He looks at me and he tells me I've passed the test. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what on earth? But of course, uh, the, the dream is um, because the car is rolling back, And she's dented another car by pushing it back in. So the dreamer is looking at the past and she's looking at where she's hurt other people or where she has decided she's hurt other people or affected them, dented them. Um, And she's feeling bad about that. And she's trying to she's trying to straighten it out uh, in the dream. In fact, she does straighten it out in the dream. Um, So it's saying like at a time in her life when she was pushy because she's pushing the car, uh, she's affected other people negatively. And she is now concerned about that. And then she turns to this other, to this bald man up on a hill with a clipboard. So this is her guide. Uh, and he says to her, you've passed the test. So he's saying to her, look, it's, it's all OK. Uh, you can let this go. It's been dealt with. Um, and we've been watching the whole thing. We're happy with how you've dealt with it. Or you've, you've progressed. You've moved on. And always when you see a test in a dream, uh, it means that you are ready to move into the next phase of your life, a new phase of consciousness. So. You have to let other things go. And whatever else is in the dream is what you have to let go. So she has to let go the, the idea that she needs to make reparations still uh, to other people because that's holding her back. It's, it's dragging her down. 
And why is he bald? He's bald because it's telling her uh, whatever your guide does, you have to do. And hair in dreams represents thoughts. So somebody who's bald represents somebody who's not thinking about something. So he's saying you need to stop thinking about this. It's all OK. Um, so very good. Very cool. good dream. Um, again, looking at the time. How long have we got? We have two minutes. Oh, my gosh. What can we squeeze in? I don't know if we could squeeze anything. Susan, Susan, sing a song. <laughs> I have a, la, la, la. <laughs> I have a really short dream here if I can just find it. OK, or I, else I have a short song. <laughs> <laughs> I dreamt acting. I was acting in an international movie as a lead actor and I was paid one million US dollars. One million dollars. <laughs> what does that mean? And that's from. Uh, oh, I don't know if I could pronounce that name. Uh, let's say I too. Um, so acting is to do with channeling. So you have unless, of course, this is part of your reality and you are looking to uh, work as an actor. But let's assume you're not because you're not going to get paid a million dollars unless you're already famous as an actor. So uh, it's saying that you are a channel and uh, you're also a spiritual teacher. And when you get into those roles, um, you will be rewarded handsomely, which is what the, uh, the one million is about, that it's going to give you tons and tons of energy. Um, so we're going to leave it at that for this week and we're going to say uh, thank you to Eric Ryder, our producer and engineer. Uh, remember, I have a class starting on July 16th. It's an online one. I'm getting absolutely rave reviews about it. Uh, I'm nearly finished with the pilot. Oh my God, I'm not getting any sleep. And um, <laughs> and did you want to say what that class is about, it's Michael? <laughs> it's about discovering your life purpose through uh, dream interpretation. So I will discover your life purpose for you when you submit your dreams on the course. But you will learn tons and tons and tons. Um, it's it's really nicely uh, laid out. Anyway, we'll talk more about that next week when Heidi's back because she's part of the course too. And so is Susan. We'll drag her in. Anyway, uh, going to leave you with this quote from Alan Turing. Sometimes it is people no one can imagine anything of who do the things no one can imagine. See you next week. Thanks for listening. Bye.